We're live. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Let's drop it down a bit. <laughs> All right. So we got Rusty. What's going on in Jersey? How you doing, Bob? Cold and snowy in Denver. I read you, man. It's bitterly cold in some parts of the country and into Canada. Of course, there's uh, Scott, brutally cold in Kingston. Man, stay warm, everybody. Elias, what's up? Good to see you for finger picking. All right. Good day. Peter in Sydney. Russ, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Riding the weather roller coaster in Fort Worth is Chad. Right on. John McCarthy, what's up? Hi, back at you. Steve, what's going on? Uh, hello from Quebec. Helly J. All right. Midday here in Melbourne. Good day. Craig, good to see you again. Zane, what's up from Denver? Steve Langford, new Skinnerd song. Yes, we finally got Call Me the Breeze up. Got delayed for a little while. So I uh, apologize if you're waiting for that one. I think you might have been one of the ones waiting for that one. So uh, enjoy. What's up, Rocket Guitar, Minnesota? What's up, Igor from Mexico City? As always, good to see you. Oh, Steve, hopefully you can hold on. Keep losing internet. That's always a drag. Duke 49, what's up, Missouri? How's it going? Andy from sunny Florida. All right. We got some nice parts of the country here. <laughs> Andre from Quebec City again. Great. Welcome. Raymond, what's up? Jim King from Cold Windsor. Oh, stay warm. Stay warm. Jeff, what's up in Minnesota? Stay warm. <laughs> And bracing in Pennsylvania for Rob. All right. Jody One, what's up, Jim Gregory? Tien from Vietnam. Welcome, everybody. Appreciate you joining. Tonight, we're going to do some finger picking on the acoustic. Of course, this is transferable to the electric guitar if you don't have an acoustic, although uh, obviously uh, considered an acoustic technique. But, you know, some people like to get it, and sometimes it makes sense uh, to whip out the finger picking on the electric, right? Jeff from Pleasanton, California. Welcome, welcome. Hope all is well in Cali. Uh, for those of you joining for the first time, I encourage you to expand the description below the video. And we've got a link to the tabs that we're going to go over tonight. Uh, PDF should link to it. HH from Ottawa. All right. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Timothy, what's up? How's it going from Mississippi? Back at you, Donnie. All right. Thanks. Okay, freezing and extremely windy in Connecticut. Raymond, well, I'm glad you're hunkering down and joining us tonight, everybody. Uh, appreciate you joining in. One more time, expand the description. You get the tabs. There's a link to a PDF with the tabs. All right. Mike McSee, Brisbane, Australia, hot and sunny. Well, I am jealous, but uh, good day, Mike. Excellent. Uh, James, one last breath. Electric is killing me. Oh, it's a toughie. You just got to go slow with it, man. Each little section at a time. All right. Stick with it. Uh, Elias, bar chords are easier on electric. Is the same applicable to finger picking? I would. I that one's a little tougher of a uh, answer for you, Elias. I, I would almost say that on an electric, it's a little trickier because. Uh, Generally speaking, not always guitar dependent, but generally speaking, on the electrics, you got smaller strings and they're a little bit closer together, so it might be a little bit tougher to uh, to do some finger picking. It again, your mileage may vary depending on type of guitar, but I would say as a general thing, uh, it's probably a little bit easier on acoustic. You got a little more room to get those fingers maneuvered, right? Bobby from Florida, what's up? And Ray. Feeling good here in NorCal. Excellent. Thanks for joining. Rui, good to see you again. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to go through a few exercises, get the fingers going at first, and get some examples. And uh, hopefully, as always with these sessions, what I'm trying to do is get you uh, inspired, uh, trip onto something that uh, will hopefully inspire you to pick up the guitar and practice a little more. Uh, and as always, uh, try to use these exercises as springboards explorations into, uh, you know, take them beyond what we just have tabbed out and what I'm just going to show you, okay? Try to apply it in all different types of ways, okay? King 50 as always, Northern Nevada, what's up? And Pat Rogers, welcome. And Elizabeth from California. All right, it's all right in California. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, 
Well, uh, we'll dig into exercise one, which uh, might be a little tricky at first. I, I was just looking for, for a warm up for all the fingers. And uh, this is sort of a sequence of just getting, you know, holding one chord, in this case, a C chord. Okay, so we've got the third fret of the A string, second fret of the D string, open G string, first fret of the B string in the open high string, not using the low string for this. And we're just basically going to assign each digit on your finger picking hand uh, to a respective string. So the thumb will be the fifth or the A string, right? And then uh, your first finger, D string or fourth string, middle finger, the G string or third, uh, ring finger on the B string or second, and the pinky up top on the high string. Now, what you're gonna notice is that uh, this pinky is going to be the weakest of all of them. It's gonna be the most challenging to try and get this exercise going, but uh, it's all it's always helpful to, you know, try to flex everything, right? Uh, let's see, Z I can't even begin to say that, is uh, CZAJ, what's up? Uh, <laughs> even if you had an acoustic, the neighbors could become a bit hostile for Rui. All right, well, keep it low key, man. <laughs> all right, wait till the, the waking hours to crank it up. So a little bit of a sequence here. We're going to start with the fifth string and just you know, you know a little pluck with the thumb. And by okay, so just a little bit of review before we get into uh, our usual sort of uh, finger picking exercises kind of stuff. Just a little bit of a primer, right? Your arm just resting the top of the body, nice and relaxed. You're coming in at an angle, roughly somewhere over over top the uh, sound hole here, okay, and relaxed is what we're trying to do. Dennis, what's up? You made it, Kenneth. Welcome, welcome. Okay, relaxed. Come in kind of at an angle on the strings. Uh, some of you like to anchor the pinky. It's okay to anchor um, if that feels more natural for you, but it's not necessary. I, per I prefer to float over top of those strings, okay? Uh, Happy New Year back at you, Sophia. Good to see you. And Jay, what's up? Welcome. Happy New Year. Welcome back. Excellent. And it is early morning in Poland. All right. Well, thanks for joining tonight. Excellent. Uh, C chord. Okay. And we're going to start uh, just nice and relaxed. Okay. So a pluck on the A string and then two plucks on the fourth, uh, fourth string. Yep. And then you're going to go back to the thumb, back to the first, and then second finger. It's going to give you two plucks. Okay, so I'm actually going to play through this first slowly so you can sort of hear the sequence of it. And then uh, we'll go really slow through it afterwards. Okay, so. Okay, that's what we're going for in this first exercise. So it does have a little bit of meat to it. Usually we start with something really easy, but uh, but this one we want to get all the fingers going, okay? So, so you can see that we're working each finger here with two plucks at the same time, or two plucks in succession. And then we go back one, back to the one we were just on, and then go forward, and then two on the next one. And sort of cascade through there and then back down. Okay, so study the tab a little bit, go as slow as you need to to get this under your fingers a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go one more time here, night really slow here, okay? One E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E, we're doing 16th notes, here we go. Just a little exercise, getting the fingers going, getting all the fingers involved, okay? And what you're gonna find as we go through these exercises as our previous uh, boot camp volumes, of which there were three previous to this one, which you can find on the Guitar Tricks channel. Uh, everything that we've done on the stream is up there still. So you can go back and review 
those as well. But uh, what you'll find is that the you know we don't just assign uh, fingers to the strings and keep it that way. Those those fingers are moving, and those finger assignments change depending on what we're trying to do. Okay, and there's not just one way to do things. Uh, as you'll see through these exercises, there's different ways that you can practice it using different fingers, and you get the same outcome, right? So I highly encourage some experimentation and just seeing what feels most natural for you. A lot of the times, uh, I'll try I'll try and reduce the finger picking down to just the thumb and the first two fingers because they're the strongest and the most solid, right? Uh, so it's a really good idea when you know at least when you're practicing to include that ring finger as much as you can and even the pinky as much as you can because you'll find how much weaker they are when you're going through these. Make sense? We all with me? All right. Exercise two, a triplet exercise uh, where we're going to take a couple chords and get into a flow of triplets. So uh, okay, so that's the first bar there. I've got an A minor and I've talked about this before. And you know, usually when you're looking at a tab or looking at a transcription, they give you the chords uh, symbols on top. And those are your friends. And even though you look at the tab and you go, oh, I need to put the fingers here. It's a really great idea to finger the whole chord. Okay. So as you can see in the first bar, I'm only using second fret of the G, first fret of the B. So I could get by doing that. But this is an A minor chord that we're uh, playing with in this particular riff, right? So if I happen to hit a wrong string and include this D note, then it changes the chord. But if I have that full A minor shape fingered down, right? Then even if I hit that D string by mistake, it's not gonna sound wrong. It's not gonna change the sound of the chord, okay? So. So we're getting into a flow. Thumb on the A string, open A string, and then first, on the G string, and then the second finger, middle finger on the B string. Groups of three, right? So we're gonna do two groups of three on A minor. And then we move to E minor. And I'm still gonna fret the second fret of the A and D string, okay? Even though I don't finger pick those notes. But again, if I happen to make a mistake and finger pick one of those strings by mistake, it's not going to sound like a mistake, okay? So you see how going from the A minor with this particular strum pattern or finger picking pattern. Your thumb is going to be changing strings. We're going from A to the low E, but we're still picking on the same strings, G string and then B string, right? If I was to mess up, right, it still doesn't exactly sound wrong, right? You know, if I happen to strike the D string instead of the G string, as long as I'm holding the full chord, it's going to still sound okay. All right? So highly encourage that. Second bar, we're switching the strings that we're doing up top. Whoops. Okay, so the bass notes are the same as the first bar, A and then E, but now moving the first finger and the middle finger up to the B and high E string. So this is a great exercise to switch back and forth. Let's try that a few times. sense all right and what we've got there are eighth note triplets so you're gonna fit the each cluster of three into the time of one click right so if the pulse is one two three four you're gonna be feeling 
triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. So we have a request to uh, keep going on the on the acoustic. All right. Well, maybe I'll switch it up one week at a time. Right. I'll do a week of electric and a week of acoustic. Maybe we'll start doing that this year. That's a good suggestion, I think. All right. <laughs> and Chad, a plus one there. Acoustic work has absolutely increased my electric skills. There you go. Yeah. What you'll find is if you you spend a lot of time working on the acoustic and progressing on the acoustic, when you go over to the electric, it feels easier. Right. Uh, of course, depending on what you're doing, but generally speaking, it'll feel like, man, and start to fly a little bit on the acoustic, right? So good, good. <laughs> cool. Excellent. All right. Exercise three. Let's have a look. I called this the forward roll exercise. And so what we've got here is a descending chord progression. Broke out the classical. I love it. I'll have to do that too one of these days. I got a classical guitar in there, so I'm going to bring it out. I threaten. I threaten to bring it out for one of these sessions. Okay. That's not how we're going to play it, though. We're going to use each finger again. We're going to use thumb, index, middle, ring for each of these. So these, uh, much like the previous example, um, are in clusters, but this time clusters of four. So we're going thumb, first, second, third fingers and just rolling through the chords that way, okay? Starting with a C chord, okay? Thumb, first, second, third fingers, right? On the respective strings and just move arpeggiating up the chord. Okay. Next chord is a G slash B, okay? We're gonna be on the same string set. So that's the second fret of the A string, open D, open G, third fret of the B string. Going to A minor, which is open A string, second fret of the D and G, and first fret of the B. Okay. And then towards the end of that bar is a little bit of a tricky move. I'm gonna move my ring finger off of the G string and bring it down to the G note, third fret of the low string. I can still keep these other fingers parked on that shape. Okay, and it becomes an A minor seven up top, but we have a G in the bass now. So it's A minor seven over G, okay? Now I'm gonna go thumb on the low string, but still first, second, third on the D, G, and B string. So let's try that, just this first bar. Okay, not too bad, a little bit faster. Uh, so I want to take this question right now. Uh, I think it's pretty applicable to what we're doing. Any advice on how to get more volume when finger picking and still maintaining speed and form? It's tricky, okay? Um, what I would recommend, Jim, is, and uh, for everybody who's thinking about this, is, uh, you know, practice slow, okay? And uh, practice at just a medium... You, you, Basically, when, when you're sort of trying to get this stuff under your fingers, you don't want to be too soft, but you don't want to be too hard either. You don't want to be working on getting more volume right off the top, just somewhere right in the middle, okay, where it's not so soft, but it's not too loud that you're kind of digging in and it's affecting your timing. Just somewhere nice and comfortable, something like that, right? Because I have a ways to go. If I, if I went really light, I could still, right? So you want to get a little bit of volume and try to be as consistent as you can, but without sort of digging into it. Right? That's getting a little more aggressive, but then, as you say, it can kind of mess with your timing a little bit or, uh, you know, with your, how solid you are. So let's just work on just being a nice medium dynamic. And the more that the fingers start loosening up, and feel more natural and you don't have to think about it as much, then you can start working on the dynamics of how you're plucking those strings, okay? 
And once again, I would go slow and then just try to work, uh, you know, pick any exercise, go really slow and work on, see how loud you can get on all of those and go slow with it. And don't worry about chord changes, just focus on dynamic of the fingers, okay? You can see like I'm still not super, right? I'm not getting super obnoxious with it, but I am. Digging in a little bit to get some volume. Okay. And there's another one too, MA. It's a good suggestion. If you if you want to, you've got the, the finger picks and you can experiment with that stuff too. Although I wouldn't uh, necessarily um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that if you're new to finger picking. I would really work on just getting the pads of the fingers down as best you can and really getting decent enough at finger picking uh, without that stuff and then try to introduce some stuff like that like the you know sort of the finger the uh, you know thumb pick and you can even get finger picks or grow your nails out all that kind of stuff right uh, would really just work on getting the overall loose sort of fluid muscle motions going here first before you know taking to the next level with that if that makes sense. My old classical teacher used to say the fingers should be like hot dogs. I like that. That's funny. Okay. So hopefully that helps, Jim. Uh, you know, just get to a point where you feel like you've got a little more motion here and then just be intentional about it. Start to work on bringing that dynamic up and seeing what you can do to make that consistent. But, uh, you know, and you can do the same thing with, you know, really light picks too. Just work on how light you can get it as well. All right. Is it possible to create your own patterns from the open chords? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Okay. Uh, let me finish off this example a little bit and I'll show you some different ways to think about it. Okay. So we've just done the first bar. And it continues downwards with uh, this motion down here. Now there's a couple choices here with your fingers. Like you could you could grab these chords with different fingers here. So I'm, I'm not gonna really specify. You know, you can get, you can use the pinky ring and middle, or you can just go to the index middle ring, right? Okay, but what we've got is that uh, D chord up top. The F sharp in the bass, second fret of the low string, very common voicing, we see it all the time. And then just moving that note down from F sharp to an F. And that sort of highlights a D minor right there. Move. You're kind of going from D major to D minor with that motion. And we're going to go to E sus4. And then pull that pinky off the G string to the first fret open E, right? So I've got the pinky on there to make it an, a sus4. Going to an open E. So let's see if we can get this thing all the way through. progression. Now, some other things that you can do with this, right? Because I've got it. Uh, if you look at the notes on the uh, staff part, the music notes part of this above the tab, you know, I put down first finger, second finger, third finger. Uh, another thing that you can do is drag the thumb along for the first two, right? And then just use the first finger on the G string, second finger on the B string if you wanted to. So that's something you could do as well. So we're not set in stone as far as which fingers go where. It's sort of whatever feels the most natural. And keep in, in mind, these first four things are kind of an exercise type thing. So, um, you know, I suggested that just to get the most out of your fingers to try and, uh, you know, practice up on it. But, uh, you know, in the real world, you could kind of just get at that however. 
I do this a lot. I'll do the, like the, the lowest two notes with the thumb and then pick it up with the other fingers. Okay. Now, uh, Elias was asking, is it po possible to create your own patterns from the open chords? Absolutely. Like just try and, you know, think of arpeggiation, you know, chord arpeggiation. We've talked about a little bit about that. Uh, in some of the guitar workouts, or even I think we did some chord arpeggiation <laughs> workshops, perhaps. But uh, you kind of want to make it work out with the music, right? Mm -hmm. You got to sort of pick your rhythm, whether you're going to do 16th notes or 8th note triplets, like kind of what we've done, right? And figure out where those chord changes happen and then how many picks in between you're going to do and just experiment, right? And, you know, sometimes, you you know, in all of these examples, we're starting with a root, you know, low part with our thumb, but that's, you don't necessarily have to do that, right? It's just, just so happens we're doing that tonight, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. All right, so that's the forward roll where we're just getting into the flow of... Little tip, right? If you're on the acoustic and uh, you're resting on the top. And if you just pull the guitar, like just a little bit of pressure with your elbow coming back and also pulling just a little bit with this arm as well, you get that sort of vibrato effect. All right, you don't, you don't want to dig in too far then start to crack something, right? But, Thanks, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> okay. Gives it a cool little, it's like a vibrato kind of thing, right? Little tip. <laughs> Didn't tab that one out. Something to experiment with, right? All right. We're doing okay. Exercise four. The thumb and pluck exercise. Okay. So I've got, I'm starting with a G chord. And I'm going to do what I, <laughs> excuse me, talked about in the previous exercise with the thumb getting the lower two notes. But this time I've got my index, middle, and ring sort of locked together and just plucking the strings at the same time. So I've got it starting on the D string, including the G string and the B string, these three fingers. So uh, this is a cool approach as well. Next chords and F chords. So <laughs> hopefully you've got bar chords going. RW, can you finger pick zero three five? Uh, meaning. Uh, not sure 035 uh whether you mean the strings yes the open string to the third string to the fifth string what's up jerry from langley all right welcome those of you just joining us tonight by the way expand the description below we've got tabs going for tonight oh it's a meme smoke on the water meme oh darn it i'm not up on the memes i i apologize <laughs> sorry man Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I don't know what the meme is. I'm going to have to check that out, though. It sounds funny. All right. So we've got the G chord. Thumb on the root. Low string. And then bringing it up to the second fret of the A string. And then plucking the D, G, and B string. Going to the F chord. So if you've got your F bar chord. It's the same strings, thumb on the low string, A string, and then plucking D, G, and B, okay? So, and then I'm going to an E minor seven, okay? So that's going to be the second fret of the A and D string, third fret of the B string. Everything else is open. Smoke on the Water is a great song being destroyed by the internet. Man, I'm out of the loop. I need to check that out. 
So we're apl applying our pattern to the exact same strings, just changing the chords. G, F, E minor 7. And then staying on that in the second bar. Then we're going to switch to now going off the uh, a different string set. So starting with the fifth string or the A string, and thumb is going to be fifth and fourth string. The plucking is going to be the G, B, and high E string, the top three strings. First one is a C add nine, which is looks like a G chord, but you've got the lower notes starting on C, third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G, but then third fret of the B and high E string, right? Okay. Whoops. All right, after that chord is a B minor seven, so another bar chord. Barring on the second fret, grabbing the fourth fret of the D string, third fret of the B string. And then just kind of coming down with that same shape to A minor seven. You could switch your fingers up, kind of do it the way most people do it. If I'm coming from B minor seven, I've already got those fingers in position where I can just slide them down to the nut and grab it, right? So let's see, let's put it together. Just a cool uh, finger picking pattern, incorporating some plucks. Nice little chord progression, right? All right, King 50, any downs to playing E minor seven with two, three, four? Uh, no. Not at all. Whatever's the most natural. In fact, what I end up doing is I end up getting, I straddle this index finger across the A and D string. And then I just can use either the pinky or the, the ring finger on the upper D note. Right? So that's a good skill. This will give you more fingers to kind of do lots of different things if, if you can kind of get used to putting the pad of the finger and fretting two strings at the same time. Do that a lot. You can do that with the A sus too, right? The E minor, the E minor seven. Okay. Give it a try, but it's super useful to be able to do that. H H, just learned you're playing guitar. I'll follow you every night. Say I have to bring my guitar next cruise. Hopefully in November. All right. Excellent. That sounds great. King fifty. Do you mute any strings on the index over two frets? Nope. Try not to. You got to curl it, right? You got to kind of come in. Straight, straight on if you can and curl it up. Yeah, Sarah, Erica, you noticed it. That's right, I do do that. It's my default. Okay, but I'm not muting anything with that. You gotta try and curl it up. Okay. Excellent. All right, all right. The thumb and pluck exercise heading into the triad riff with the open string. Exercise five. Let's see, Elias, a really nice song on GT that is entirely finger picking is Mad World. All right, there you go, try it out. Man, I didn't realize that we were teaching that one with a finger picking pattern, that's cool. All right, Mad World's on guitar tricks. <laughs> cool. All right, exercise five, triads. You know, I can't get enough of the triads. So we're going to start out with, uh, we're going to move some triads around with the open A string, basically. 
and come up with a cool little uh, finger picking pattern, starting with seven on the D, six on the G, five on the B. That's an A major triad, right? If you think about the A major bar chord and just pluck out the D, G, and B strings, you've got an A chord. You've got A, C sharp, E. Those are the notes that spell A major. Okay, so a three note chord is called a triad. We're making a major chord, okay? Now let's look at the picking pattern. So I've got my moving thumb again, starting on the open A and then middle finger on the B string. So I'm sort of doing the outside of these chords. Then I'm bringing my thumb into the D string and first finger into the G string. That's the pattern. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. All right. So that's the first bar. Sounds really nice. And I'm just going to move that shape over two frets. Now that's a G major chord, still over an A in the bass, right? So that's a pretty cool little sound to it. So now I'm going to grab the D over A triad, okay, which is fourth fret of the D, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. Sounds really nice because there's actually an A in that chord, right? So, and then just gonna flatten down on the sec second fret and get the. Uh, this is another A major triad just on the D, G, and B string, right? Mess that up. So you put it together. What do we got? We got challenge here uh, for those of you who uh, are with me on the guitar workouts and whatnot when we kind of play with different triad shapes across the same uh, string set we can transpose this whole chord progression up to the next inversion let's try that so if I started here on this A major the next shape up is that D shape that we use down here but if I play it up at the ninth position so that it's the 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, and 10th fret of the B, that's an A major chord. It's just a different inversion. Now the C sharp note is the lowest note. So let's see what we can do to play this chord progression starting with that, right? Okay, I can move it down two frets to get the G major. And then at the seventh fret, if I bar down, that gives me a D major, still with the A in the bass, and then we can end off on that particular A, right? Okay. So I encourage like kind of doing stuff like that, like see, testing your knowledge of the triads. Keep it going from there. Keep going down. <laughs> Dust it up. Go up even higher, right? If you can get the, <laughs> if you got room on your acoustic to get the A major, 14th fret. Right? 
so you're playing the same chord progression, but you're getting good at finding those chord inversions, those triad inversions up and down the neck. Sound good? <laughs> All right. Cheers, everybody. All right. Exercise six. What can we do to switch it up? So we're going to go into more of a swing with our finger picking. <clears throat> so we're thinking a little bit of uh, friends in low places here. I'm not sure this is the exact chord progression, but it's kind of close. Got the similar vibe to it. Uh, let's see if I can play it and then we'll talk about it. That's what we're going for. And uh, the big difference with this one is that we're swinging the finger picking. Okay. So uh, we've got more of that dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, that sort of shuffly swing to it, where those ands in between, you've got to push those out a little bit further towards the next downbeat. Okay. So if I was to play this straight where everything was equal, right? That's what it would sound like, but you need to have that swing or that shuffle. So you start to go. sense try it again a little bit slower dun, dun, dun. one and two and three and four what else are we doing on this one so i'm Bring in the thumb again for the fifth string and also the fourth string. So uh, let's see. So once again, like on the G and B string, I'm just using the first and second finger. But of course, you don't have to do that, right? You can do the thumb just once and use two uh, first, second, and third fingers. That's a good practice. Whatever feels easier, more natural, or if you want to use this as an exercise to really work that uh, ring finger, then by all means, absolutely. It's a good one. Make sense? Everybody with me? All right. What's up, Shiloh? Hello, hello. Welcome. Okay, exercise seven, back to straight time. And gonna incorporate some hammer-ons into this. Uh, totally typical thing to do with finger picking or just playing with chords just to spruce it up a little bit. Starting with the G chord. So of course you want to. Okay, you wanna go uh, third fret of the low string, second fret of the A string, open D, open G, third fret of the B and high E string, okay? And what are we doing here? So let's see. Oh yeah. One more time. Go nice and slow to get it under there. It's a little tricky. So your thumb on the root. First, we've got the first finger on the G string, second finger on the B string, third finger on the top string, and we're kind of going first, uh, first, second, first, third, second, right? So. And then 
And I recommend practicing this little part. We're going to hit our thumb on the open A string and then hammer on to the second fret and then pick that with the first finger on the open D. Second chord and the second bar is a C add nine, which is just the G chord where you move the low notes up a string set. So you've got the third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G string, third fret of the top two strings. Uh, but oh, I'm gonna open up the open E string on this. Which is a cool little variation. And then with the thumb now on the D string, same riff, but up a string set. Hammering on from the open D to the second fret. And you have to curl that index finger enough so that when you pluck the next string, which in this case is the G string, it's nice and clean, okay? You're not, you're not flat, flat enough that you're getting some flesh on it. You gotta, Bring it in nice and curled. So what does that sound like? Let's see. That's what we're going for with that one. Make sense? Sound right? Sound all right? <laughs> Cool, cool. So again, just finger picking, chops, but just starting to add some of the technique stuff with the fingers, uh, the fretting fingers. Makes sense, makes sense. All right. Thank you, Pat. Thumbs up. Okay. Wish you were here. Yeah. Sort of that. Uh, Right on, Scott. Yeah, some of these, we got a little bit to it, right? So just take it slow, right? Basically the same kind of deal there. Yeah, Jeff got it. A little bit of skid row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could go Skid Row with it. You could go Pink Floyd with it. One way or the other, right? Harkens to those influences. All right. Same technique used in loads of songs. So there you go. All right. Exercise eight has a little more meat to it. And uh, that's going to lead us to the final exercise, exercise nine, which uh, always end off with some sort of a Travis picking type idea. Uh, but this one's got a lot to it. This one, uh, I don't know if anyone saw that A Star is Born came out a couple of years ago. And uh, I get a lot of requests from students to, uh, you know, show them how to play this song. So it might not be exact, but it's uh, close to uh, one of the songs in the movie uh, called Shallow. And it's got some cool finger picking in it, right? And uh, some different sort of timings and uh, things like that. So, and uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs too, as well. So let's just see if I can play this one. chord there at the end but yeah that was basically it let me see
Okay, Elias, the hard part is trying to finger strum right after the finger picking for hybrid type songs. Just can't get it. Gotta go slow, right? So Elias is talking about uh, when you kind of, when you got some strumming going on and then it adds some finger picking as well. Uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to transition back and forth to it. So the only way that you can kind of go through that is uh, just to slow it down and work on the transition, okay? So it, like, for example, if it's a song where it has a lot of finger picking and then it transitions to a lot of strumming, then just sort of shorten it so that you've got like a bar on either side or a half a bar on either side of the transition and loop that, go super slow, okay? And just loop it and get used to going back and forth and then try to plug it into the whole arrangement, okay? Um, but yeah, it takes some time, but again, the only recipe really for getting it is slow it way down and work on those transitions. Cool, cool, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so let's break down this, uh, this riff right here. So once again, it's an E minor seven. So whether you uh, fret both of these notes individually, second fret, of yeah and by the way once again just as a uh, just to reiterate where it tells you what the chord is above the musical notes above the tab okay read that and find out what those chord shapes are and fret those okay because even though i'm not picking them right i might get away with it but if i hit an errant string and I don't have that full chord, right, held down, you're going to add some notes that you don't want to add, right? And at least if you have the full chord, it won't be quite as noticeable, okay? So going with the thumb on the low string, and then uh, index on the G, middle finger on the B, And then getting into that D over F sharp sh shape, which uh, index finger second fret of the low string and the second and third frets of the G and B string. And you're going to hit thumb, pluck, and then cut it off. Okay, so. And then it's going to be a full pluck on the G. So you're going to get the third fret of the low string and at the same time pluck the open G in the third fret of the B string. Okay, so nice and slow. That's the first part. And you're letting that ring out over a whole other bar. Okay, so... Just practice that. Practice that part over and over. The key there is after the D, you want to cut that off. Okay, so whether it's karate chop, or I even can just cut it off by lifting my fingers off the frets. Okay. Yes, you can. If you, uh, we're asking whether or not you can use the thumb to get the F sharp, and you can do that. If you, if you're a thumb player. If it's natural for you to do that, go for it. Okay, a lot of people get the thumb involved. I'm not much of a thumb player. I need to fret it, so. Okay. Now we got the C add nine. So like the previous example, all I really have to get here is third fret of the A string. Oh, Sophia, awesome, awesome. Third fret of the A string. I'm curling my finger to mute the D string because we're not going to pluck it anyway. I've got the open G string, third fret of the B string, and the open high string. Okay, a number of ways you can do this, okay, because you've got the top three strings. You see what I'm doing is I've got the thumb on the root. You can use index, middle, ring on each of those respective strings. What I have actually transcribed out is to use the middle finger on the top as well as the B string. So you can do that too. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. 
I'm using the same finger there, but you don't have to do that. You can use your ring, middle, right? Okay. So just practice that bar and get used to... And then it's back to the G chord with that same sort of thumb and then the pluck up top, G and B string, and then the cutoff. Now you're gonna do a full pluck here, thumb on the D string, second fret of the G, third fret of the B. This is the tricky one. It's a quick little 16th note triplet where you've got the open E string hammering on to the second fret of the E string and then pulling off while you're still holding the D, okay? Because I can, I can let that ring out. And then you get, you want to pluck the B string and G string, okay? So coming out of the, from the C chord. So it's a little bit tricky. This one's got a lot of stuff, a lot of space, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of different ideas combined. So this is definitely a little advanced exercise, but well worth just taking it a bar at a time, right? Take that first chunk over and over and over, nice and slow, right? Then take that second chunk just on the C add nine and just get that down, right? Try to do as much repetition as you can so the muscle memory takes over, right? Same thing with the last bar. And of course it is tricky, okay? To get that little thing there. So just slow it down. You know, even slower than that if you have to. Right. Steve's asking, I seem to play, uh, oh, wait a minute. Do you pick up the electric and acoustic daily? Steve, I seem to play one or the other for weeks and it poses some obvious reacclimation. <laughs> right now I can't seem to set down the acoustics. Uh, yeah, you'll find that as you progress on either of those, there is a transition period if you go long time without one or the other. But that time that reacclimation will shrink as your skills get better and better, right? So just keep going. Um, yeah, I've gotten to the point where I've been obviously playing a long time, so I don't think about you know, I pick up the acoustic when I need to do something on the acoustic and otherwise I've got the electrics going. And uh, yeah, there's even, you know, for me, there's a little bit of an acclimation uh, to it, but uh, it's pretty short by, by this time, right? Because I've been playing for a long time. But uh, so what you'll find is as you progress on either of those instruments, that acclimation time will go get shorter and shorter. Okay. So if it's super important to you, to like be able to pick it up and be, you know, kind of right on it, then yeah, try and, you know, blend it a little more frequently. Try to, you know, touch both of them in a day or every couple days, switch them. Maybe don't let it go weeks. But uh, you'll just find generally as you get to be a generally a better player, uh, you can go back and forth a lot easier. What's up, Gabriel from Argentina? Right back at you. Erica, what did I learn first? Good question. Uh, I believe uh, uh, the first time I picked up a guitar was a uh, in middle school was a uh, classical. It was just a general guitar class, and it was you learn on these classical guitars. And then I got an acoustic guitar <coughs> uh, for Christmas one year, and it was probably a couple years after that that I got an electric for myself. But I had friends that had electric guitars. So I was already kind of banging around on electrics at the same time a little bit, even though I didn't have one. So, you know, kind of started on acoustic, but uh, but was around electrics as well, even though I didn't have one for a while. All right. Well, we got a couple minutes, so uh, I'll just go through this last one real quick. It's a Travis picking kind of thing. So uh, what you want to grab is a... E major seven in the seventh position. I've got the seventh fret of the A string, ninth fret of the D string, eighth fret of the G string, ninth fret of the B string. And with this A major seven up here, you can have the low 
and high open strings ring out with it. It sounds nice. So that's sort of what I'm going for here. If you go really slow with this, okay, it's a little bit weird at first because we're plucking the A string. I'm using my middle finger on the B string. And then you're going into eighth notes here, right? Like thumb on the, on the D string, first on the G, thumb on the low string, third finger on the high string, and then back to the thumb on the ninth. So a little bit tricky. eventually but you gotta start somewhere you gotta start slow and then all i did is move that shape down to the b major seven this time barring down at the second fret okay so it's the same shape but i've got the second fret of the high string bar down. and i've adjusted the pattern a little bit so that the thumb doesn't go down to the low string so it's a little bit different in that second bar Sorry. Okay. Two chords, you know, some subtle differences there, but uh, if you're into digging into a little Travis picking exercise, that would be it for tonight's workshop. So, uh, Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. It's still a great turnout here for hanging out uh, right to the hour. So thank you so much for joining, hanging out for the whole time. Uh, I appreciate all your questions are great. Thanks so much for that. Uh, hopefully you've got some uh, stuff to practice with over the next week. Okay. Excellent, King 50. Rusty, thank you. Russ, thank you. Igor, thank you. Elias, thank you, Jim. <laughs> thank you, Erica. Thanks, James, Zane, Scott B, and Jay. Thank you, Jody One. And Peter, excellent. John, Pat, Jim Gregory, excellent. <laughs> thank you very much, HH. That's, that's really nice. Thank you, HH. That's great. Uh, Steve. Have a great weekend to you. M.A., thank you as well. Andy, thank you. And the pile of Duke. <laughs> All right. Cheers, Mike, back at you. Dennis, good night, everyone. I hope you have a great weekend. Have a great next week. Uh, not sure what we'll do next week. We'll do something on the electric, and then we'll switch back and forth probably. We'll start doing that, okay? So we'll be back on the electric next week, hopefully with some more gems. All right? Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.